Hey, welcome to the 800 Pound Gorilla Expert Podcast, where we interview experts at helping you grow your business or your practice. I'm your host, Carl Utter, and now today's show. All right, folks, today's guest is Wes Schaefer. Wes is known as the Sales Whisper. He calls himself a pig-headed entrepreneur who rehabilitates salespeople and trains their managers. He is reassuredly expensive copywriter, a sought-after speaker, and a marketing automation officiato. He is the author of two and a half sales books, Marketing and Entrepreneurship. He hosts the sales podcast in the CRM Sushi Podcast. He has helped 5,400 of the world's top speakers, authors, and coaches and sales professionals achieve nearly miraculous growth by mastering his proven process, which hinges on the idea that to make any sale, you need to make every sale. So ladies and gentlemen, Wes Schaefer, the sales whisper. <laughs> so yeah, I'm here. I'm here with Wes. Wes goes by the name of the sales whisper. I love the name. Thank you. Name. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the sales whisper, if you would, Wes. Oh, man. You know, I got the idea from the dog whisperer who um, he said he would, he would train owners and rehabilitate. Uh, he, would, he would train the dogs to rehabilitate the owners. And I do that with salespeople. There you go. Are you in your work? Um, this is a little off the topic here, but uh, in your work, are you still seeing that a lot of sales managers getting promoted because they're good at sales and got promoted into a manager. Is that still uh, something you run into a lot or is that starting to change a little bit? Yeah, it does. People tend to, they want to hire from within and, and in general, that's fine. Uh, as long as you have some type of sales management mentorship kind of program, right? If you just grab your top salesperson, and promote them, um, you're just asking for trouble. Yep. Then you end up losing your best salesperson and get a mediocre manager. So, right. Yep. So, so Wes, tell us, who's your ideal client? Who do you like working with? Um, you know, that's evolved over the years. Uh, now I'm working with a little bit bigger companies uh, in the SMB space, uh, you know, 10 to 25 salespeople. I'm working with the, the VP of sales, president of sales, VP of marketing, uh, both of them helping them uh, choose their best platform, uh, something like a, a HubSpot or Salesforce uh, to bring everything together, right? To get sales and marketing on the same page. What problems do you typically help these uh, companies solve? Uh, I eliminate silos, Right. Okay. Um, marketing is doing their thing. They're, they're making pretty brochures and, and nice PowerPoint slides that spin and use confetti on the transition. Salespeople are just out there talking to anybody that can fog a mirror. Uh, operations is trying to figure out what's the real forecast. You know, how do we, how do we get ahead of this? Make sure we can deliver. I mean, as long as sales are fine, everybody, they think everything's okay, but yep. When there's one month left in the quarter, you know, when there's two weeks left in the quarter and you're way behind your number and people start getting antsy, um, that's when bad things start to happen. Okay. Uh, you, so what's a, what's a typical symptom, Wes, that a, that a company would be having that may make them go, you know, I, I, I think we need to bring in the sales whisper. If people are hostile towards one another, right, in different departments, if it's this us versus them sort of mentality, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got big yo-yos, big, really big highs and really big lows uh, from month to month, quarter to quarter. So no predictability. Uh, you can't put your finger on it, right? The beatings will continue to morale improves sort of approach. There you go. There you go. What are some common mistakes uh, these businesses make when they try to fix these issues on their own? You know, they've promoted from within. So they had a great salesperson who, like a great athlete, uh, can't really put a finger on why they're good. They're just good. Okay. That's why when you see typical coaches like Bill Belichick, right? I don't think he was any kind of all pro football player. But he's a great coach. Uh, John Wooden, I don't know how great he was as a player, but he was obviously a great coach. 
So when you get someone that has an analytical mind and applies the, the art with the science of sales, uh, they can start to figure things out, right? So you got you to gotta bring all that together uh, because selling is much more uh, predictable and systematic and scientific than most people realize. Yep. I would agree. I would absolutely agree that. Um, so what's one valuable action our audience can take? Let's say they've got five, 10 salespeople. Maybe they've got a sales manager, a VP of sales. Um, and, uh, you know, they're seeing some inconsistencies. What's one free action they can take to improve their sales? You know, what I tell everybody to do when I start coaching them is to track their time in 15 minute increments for a month. Okay. And they think it's going to be hard to do. And it's not hard to do. Just literally print your calendar out for a week. Keep it on your desk. And, you know, if you're on a conference call for an hour, just draw a line and, you know, conference call. And you'll start to, again, if you can measure it, you can improve it. Uh, you're probably doing silly things, redundant things, uh, spending too much time repeating a quote, a proposal, you know, sending out the same email over and over again, you're typing out. There's redundancies, there's inefficiencies in your business. And again, if you can measure it, you can improve it. But most people can't detach from the chaos. They're just enmeshed in it. They're, they're surrounded by it. They're drowning in it. And so they don't think they have time to fix things. And, and they absolutely do have time. But you got you to gotta detach for a little bit to see it. Got it. Got it. So what is one free resource uh, you could direct our audience to uh, that would, would help them? Maybe a free download, uh, uh, an introductory course, a handout, you know, maybe something on your website that, that might help people in this position, Wes. Uh, get the sales agenda. So it's uh, thesalesagenda.com. So it's a okay. free, free download. They can edit it, use it uh, on their own. Uh, but it's the, the exact agenda I have followed since 2006 to close big deals. Uh, when I was still in corporate America, I mean, I was selling to Google. I was selling to uh, big telecom like Sprint, uh, Apple, using this agenda. And the concept is that basically you have to stay in control, set the tone, get invited over, uh, let the prospect know in no uncertain terms that this is a meeting of the minds. You're showing up to ask questions. You can't diagnose, uh, you know, you, you, can't, you can't give a prescription until you diagnose, and that's going to take a little give and take. So if you follow that sales agenda, then uh, you'll remain in control. Yeah, there is. Well, you know, if you've, if you, and, and I think just about every business owner has had the situation where a salesman will come back from a sales meeting. Owner will say, how did it go? Great meeting. You know, six months later or six weeks later, Hey, you know, whatever happened to that meeting you went on, I, you know, it's gone dark. I can't find them, you know. So, how, you know, how did it go from great meeting to, you know, right. In the dark, right? What, what, and I think, you know, to your point, it's that mystification that occurs that, you know, you leave with one expectation only to discover there's another reality. There is a mystification that took place. So right. uh, I think that would be a great resource for people. Uh, well, Wes, you, you've been great so far. Uh, don't disappoint me now because I'm uh -oh. coming up on my favorite question. This is, I, I wait all night for this one question. And uh, I love this question. And Wes, what's the one question I should have asked you today, but I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> um. You know, so one is, if I had to narrow it down to one, I would say, you know, what is, what is a salesperson's real job? And, you know, they think it's to sell, to make quota, blah, blah, blah. And the process, uh, a salesperson's real job, and the only thing they have control over is to prospect. Okay, I can't force the customer to buy. That's right. But I can force myself to not drink a bunch of booze tonight and stay out to all hours of the morning so I can wake up in the morning on time feeling good. Maybe wake up early, go to the gym, go to the gym, get the energy going, but the blood's flowing, get to the office early, turn my computer on, have my tasks, my to-do list, my dream 100, whatever, and ask the right questions of the right people uh, enough times. And if I put myself in position to make the sale, it's going to happen. You know, so, so get clear on what your real goals, your real job description is. Right. Yep. Great, uh, great, great advice. Great advice. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Sales Whisper. Um, and Wes, just give us that website one more time, if you would. Yep, it's just uh, the saleswhisperer.com. So, and uh, the agenda is right there. Uh, yeah, so that one, it, it'll redirect, but it's uh, the salesagenda.com. That's probably easier to spell. Salesagenda.com. Yep. Okay. I'll take you, I'll take you to the saleswhisper.com and to a landing page. So it's easier to get to. Got it. Got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Sales Whisper. Wes, you've been a great guest. Thank you. Thanks for having me.